Hello and welcome to this afternoon taste challenge. This is going to jump ahead taste challenge for, okay. Put that there. All right. So this afternoon, if you're in the eastern time, already evening, as you can see it's still pretty bright outside, the light on my face. It's warming up, although it's a little chilly, but I mean, just uh, the slightest little bit. I may get too warm wearing this pullover. Here we have, from 1934, imported Royal Canadian Blended Canadian Whiskey. I bought this at Discount Depot in Marrero, Louisiana for $8.99, $8.99 for this 750 milliliter bottle. There's the crown, the shield of Canada, uh, a shield representing Canada with the Canadian leaf and two lions. Uh, and a banner with nothing, a banner with nothing written on it. Um, This, it says distilled under supervision of the government of the Dominion of Canada, which is not a remarkable thing to say because all Canadian whiskey is distilled under supervision of the government of the Dominion of Canada, but it looks nice. Uh, product of Canada, okay. Imported by and bottled in the US, the United States by Sazerac Company, Frankfort, Kentucky, Kentucky, 80 proof, 80 US proof, 40% alcohol. We love to hear from our customers. 1-866-729-3722, Sazerac.com. Or you can email royalcanadian at Sazerac.com. All right. It's been around for nearly 90 years. I don't see it in this parish. I've seen it in Jefferson Parish, but only on the West Bank. At Ali and Sons, they had a 375 milliliter. And I said, what's the price? He said, $5.99. I said, oh, no, too high. So I left. And when I was going back out onto Louisiana Highway 18, which is where that is, he says, sir, sir, you can have it for $5. You can have it for you, $5. I said, okay. Now we're talking. But it was actually cheaper to get this bottle because it's $8.99. It's a dollar and five cents cheaper for, you know, the bottle because it was would have been 10 normally uh, at their prices. So Discount Depot had two bottles left. I don't think they carried it anymore. My friend David said, is it worth buying? He wanted the other bottle. I said, well, I mean, it's worth buying if you want to pay $8.99. I don't know how you feel about it, So, but he didn't buy it. But I'm glad I bought it. My daughter, when she tried it about three years ago, something like that, when she first tried it, now this has got a filigree. You can feel the print on the paper. When she first tried it, she said, ugh. That was her first statement. Ugh. The video is still posted. But she had no experience with Canadian whiskey, okay? So she kept drinking it, sipping on it. She has practically no experience, let me see. By the end of the video, she said, really, it's not bad. I like it. Uh, she just said, I wasn't used to it. She was used to bourbon with the heavy charred oak and all. And then we did. What other Canadian whiskeys has she reviewed with me? I think only the only other one was the uh, Seagram's VO Gold. VO Gold. Nose is itching. Now, uh, so this is a... a more of a old style Canadian whiskey for Sazerac. It's not the new Canadian whiskey with natural flavors type thing. Now you say, ah, oh, that it's so obvious. Royal Canadian, they copied off a of Crown Royal. They probably copied the recipe or whatever. Well, how is that possible? Because this came out in 1934 and Crown Royal hit the market five years later. So maybe they copied off a of Royal Canadian, right? I think it was it's a different type 
Sazerac bottle also, if you notice. It's tapered. It's got broad shoulders, and then it tapers down, narrow, and then it's got the lip. So it's a, it's a slightly different style Sazerac bottle. There's no doubt about that. Plus it's brown. They usually deal with, with, with uh, clear. Paul's Beer Reviews. How much did you say you paid for it? Uh, $8.99 plus tax, so $8.99. Luke Lurk says, hey, Ron, hope you're having a great evening. I am, actually. Was it, talking to Major League Baseball shop, Major Liberal Baseball shop, and they said they're going to correct the order. Because they charged me $9 for expedited shipping. I said, I didn't want that. I didn't want expedited shipping. I don't care about that, I, as long as I get it. I wanted the free shipping. I don't care if it takes a week. And they told me last week, we're going to correct it. But the lady didn't. He told me, he, the man I called today said, no, she didn't fix it. She, she made a mistake. He said, so since she didn't do it, I'm going to give you the $9 back and plus um, a $20 coupon, 20% off coupon for the next order if you ever make one because of uh, Shouldn't have happened like that. I said, yeah, it was eight days. Uh, you said two to seven days. So I was wondering what was going on, you know. Damn, that's cheap for a bottle of whiskey, you say. Yeah, it is. Okay, so here's the Crown Royal bag. People said, we didn't come on to this listen to your Major League Baseball apparel story. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, this one is the, 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 the latest price I saw for this. The latest price was $29.99. $29.99. But I think I paid $27.99. But I, it went up. I bought it last year. Uh, I'm pretty sure I paid $27.99. Crown Royal Black, introduced in 2010. Now, the regular Crown Royal was introduced in 1939. So it's five years younger than the Royal Canadian. I never said this was a popular brand. I said it's been around for nearly 90 years. And it is, It you will find it. Now, in Louisiana, no. Okay, it's not popular. Other states, you might see it on every liquor show. Crown Royal Black, yeah, you pretty much see that at every liquor store. Beautiful bottle. Kind of a okay label, but uh, it's nice. Got the purple velvet pillow with the crown. Crown Royal Black was introduced in 2010. Now, was that to honor the royal visit? In 2010, it could have been because the original Crown Royal was introduced in 1939 to celebrate the royal visit of King George VI of the House of Saxe Coburg and Gotha and his wife, Queen Elizabeth of Scott. She was from Scotland, actually. But um, now the, they changed their name to the House of Windsor, but it really is Saxe Coburg and Gotha. But it that's another story. But anyway, uh, his daughter is Queen Elizabeth II. So there's only been two monarchs since Crown Royal was introduced 83, sorry, 82 years ago. He was the king in Canada, the king in Canada. But Queen Elizabeth, when she took over upon his death, 1952, she became the Queen of Canada. They changed the terminology, the Queen of Canada, not the Queen in Canada. All right, Crown Royal. Also, um, that was the same year that they appointed the first Canadian born Governor General. That's the person that represents the Queen when she's not there, which is almost 100% of the time. So, um, first Canadian born Governor General, 1952. And every Governor General since then has been a uh, Canadian. They used to be British, British men that they would send out there. It's like, it would be like some retired general or something like, well, you're 70 years old, you know, or 65 years old. You're not going to be commanding the army anymore or the Navy. So you can be the governor general, governor general of Canada for five years. You know, it's not much to do. They don't have presidents in Canada, you know. They don't have a president. They have a governor general. All right. But the prime minister runs the day-to-day -day operations, you know. Sort of like the speaker of the house, you know. 
and the, in, Amer in America, the United States, the Speaker of the House does all the day-to-day uh, -day work, more or less. And then the president makes speeches like National Dog Adoption Day and stuff like that. Okay, uh, comments. Canadian British history that, oh, you know more about Canadian and British history than I do, and that's one of the reasons I watch your great insight. Oh, thank you. Good evening, Jay. I'm sipping on a Pep's Blue Ribbon Extra, says Bart Robinson, 16-ounce black can. Good to see you. Oh, thank you. Royal Canadian Liquor versus Seagram's. Well, formerly Seagram's, but Seagram's went out of business in the year 2000, so Crown Royal was bought up by Diageo, yes. Uh, mostly Germans, World War One changed that, says Ronald Sutton. That's right. Uh, since the British royal family came from Germany, the House of Hanover, from literally Hanover, Germany, the Kingdom of Han well, the electorate of Hanover, but later the king after eighteen fifteen, the Kingdom of Hanover. Oh, see how much darker the black is. It's not actually black. It's like mahogany, but it's much darker. Is it darker? Is it that much? Oh, neither neither of these have an age statement. And the, the Royal Canadian is 80 proof and the Crown Royal Black is 90, okay? Um, does it get that dark just from being aged in charred oak? Well, it's possible, actually quite possible. Uh, do they have to add coloring to get it that dark? No. They say on the website, I can read it to you right here. It says um, it's aged longer. Now, how long is Crown Royal age? We don't know. At least three years, but it could be a good deal longer, but we don't know. It's probably a blend of different whiskeys aged. Might be three years and one might be 10, you know. But uh, it says right here, I'll go over to the website. It says, a rich and flavorful blend of Canadian whiskey. All the signature smoothness of Crown Royal matured in charred oak barrels. And blended at a higher proof for a richer texturing, bold finish. Okay, get off of that. So, uh, so they're, they're implying that the regular Crown Royal is not blended, uh, not aged in charred oak. So that would make sense, right? So yeah, if you took a fresh, never before used charred oak barrel and you took Canadian whiskey, which is basically bourbon, except they can't call it bourbon, and you age it for at least three years in charred oak, uh, yeah, it, it would get dark like that if it was freshly charred oak, like a new tea bag. Yeah. It would get dark like that. Yep, yep. And if and they probably age in a lot longer than three years. They say it's extra age. So if it's six years, even more so, even more so. I'm spilling it as I got my eyes closed. I'm like Larry Fine. I can't see. I can't see. And Mo says, "Why not?" And I got my eyes closed. All right. A small bottle of Crown Royal Reserve today didn't see the black. Yeah. Uh, maybe they're phasing it out, but I doubt it. Yeah. So the House of Hanover. Uh, King George the first, King George the second, King George the third, King George the fourth, four in a row. Um, then it was uh, William the fourth, and none of them had legitimate children that could take over the throne. But they had a lot of kids. <laughs> they had a lot of girlfriends. They weren't like their father, who was a stay-at-home father, uh, studious, praying all the time loyal to his wife, not running around with all, uh, all kind of women. But uh, the others, the sons were wild and they uh, ran around all kind of ladies and uh, had all kind of children, but not from their wives. So um, well, most of them. So then there was one that did have a legitimate daughter and that was uh, Elizabeth. So I'm sorry, what am I saying? Victoria. So she got to take over she never would have been, you know, um, the queen. But she took over at 18, so then you had Victoria I of House of Hanover. And, well, then she got married to uh, uh, Albert, Albrecht, Albert, right, of Germany, the German Confederation, saxe coburg and Gotha. So he, when they had a child, Edward VII, well, then he used that name, How House of saxe coburg and Gotha. And then they had, uh, he died, he smoked heavy, heavy, heavy. So they had George V, who also smoked. They had a bad smoking habit, those people. And uh, I'm talking about the, the royal family. And so when his son George V was the king, 
during World War One. People were saying, that's why we can't win the war, because you're secretly plotting with Germany, because y'all are Germans. He's like, oh, give me a break. So uh, they were saying the same thing in Russia, too. So um, he said, this is insane. You know, we got to change the name of the, the royal family. But the government was like, oh, just do it. You know how ignorant people are. So they said, OK, so they changed it to the House of Windsor, named after the Windsor Palace. But that's that's like an assumed name. It's not really the real name. But anyway, whatever. Uh, so he died, and then Edward the Eighth took over. But then he was crazy, not crazy like he heard voices and saw things that weren't there, or believed things that weren't true necessarily. But he, like delusions. But he was like, wow, like really kind of mentally disturbed, unbalanced. His father said, oh, he was telling the government, do whatever you got to do. Don't let him be the king. He's crazy. He'll, he'll. Who knows what he'll do? So, um, they got rid of him. He, they forced him to resign. He abdicated. See, if I quit, they say you resign from your job. But if you're a king, you abdicate. <laughs> it's the same thing as quitting. So then uh, his brother, George VI, took over. And then his daughter, Queen Elizabeth II, today. Okay. Now, uh, a, a good day to you, sir, said Craig Swanson. Same back to you. I meant I bought a small bottle. Oh, you bought a small bottle. Oh, that's good. I hope you like it. I'm having a natural light, says Commerce Ozzy. I want to stay up and watch the game. Oh, I'll be falling asleep. Trev's Travel Tales. Trev's is in Australia. Here, the queen appoints the governor general. We had one sack of prime minister in the 70s, Jeff Goff Whitlam. Yeah, that's right. Uh, remember, that was a big like controversy. The governor general fired the prime minister and his whole cabinet. <laughs> and then they told Queen Elizabeth, you get involved. Tell him he can't do that. She said, I'm not getting involved now, which means she gave it a... Um, The seal of approval, obviously. Maxwell says, hello, Ron. Hello to you, Maxwell. Paul's beer review says, is Crown Royal generally a blend or a single malt whiskey? Never had it. It's a, it's a blend, like bourbon, generally. It's a blend of mostly corn whiskey, and it's clear, odorless, colorless. Well, it's like it's like blended scotch, you know, and it, the flavor comes from the uh, single malt whiskey. Like they'll use malt whiskey in it, just like they do with bourbon. They'll use malt whiskey. They'll use uh, um, rye whiskey. They'll use wheat whiskey sometimes. They'll use aged corn whiskey. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it, as long as they age it three years. In Canada, Canada, the whiskey is invariably mostly corn, which is a common maize is a common grain in america so it's cheap but uh in america the usa as long as it's 51 percent corn then it can be bourbon 51 percent. it could be 49 percent straight rye whiskey if they wanted to make it like that and it could it'd still be bourbon okay those laws are fascinating aren't they the romanoffs were related to the british royals that's right and the british let them down and then they felt bad about it later they they, they stabbed them in the back really privet ron cockadilla how are you I'm fine. I'm having a hams waiting for the game too, Ozzy. Oh, Canada, says Lurk. Yeah, you know, that that was not the national anthem to what, 1980? The national anthem until 1980 was God Save the Queen. And the holiday was called Dominion Day, but then they changed it to Canada Day when they got their own constitution in 1982. But anyway, this is not a history lesson. Wonder where you've been, Maxwell. You drinking Budweiser? Bart Robinson says, does anyone remember reading premium? A reading premium. Just curious. It's the first time users. It's not very good at all. I've never heard of reading. 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 Right. Reading. Railroad. Premium. Bought it today. Can't be fifty percent corn. Now, what do you say, Ronald? It, no, it's got to be fifty-one. Fifty-one percent corn, not fifty percent. I say fifty-one percent. Ron, I tried E and J XO brandy today for the first time. Wow, it was good. Says N Man. Also tried the E and J apple brandy. I never had that. It was very good too. I recall you saying you would uh, never try flavored brandy. I probably never will, because um, I, I don't have time to do it. The gingers in the United Kingdom are like the Aboriginal people. Says David Extras. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All about the French in Haiti, says Daniel Wells. The French sneak up and force Haiti to pay them billions of dollars and has never paid Haiti back since. Okay. Warning, drinking two Lagunitas Waldos 11.7 is not a good idea. I would agree with that. 
Only four rolling rocks for me tonight. That's a lot. Uh, I said that sarcastically when the commentator brought up the sacking of the Canadian prime minister. Oh, the Australian prime minister he's talking about by the governor general, not a patriarch statement was in levity. Oh, okay. I'm drinking bad beer now, says Maxwell. Okay, now time to get on to this. Enough chit chat. <laughs> Although I like to chit chat. I can't look, you see, because if I glance, I'm going to see the darker one and it's going to be so clearly obvious. Uh, okay. On the nose here, you can see I can't. That's why we call it a blind taste test. Not for you. It's not blind, blind for me. Corn, corn, corn. And some wood. Oak, obviously. What else? Well, I would say some sweetness, like sugar, like candy corn type situation. Maybe some rye spice, maybe wheat. Uh, and you know what? Canadian whiskey can have flavors added. Now, do they add flavor into Crown Royal and Royal Canadian? This I do not know. I doubt it, but they could. And they don't have to disclose it. And it can be up to 9.9% .9 flavoring, like wine or brandy or rum. Don't have to disclose it. Although they do have to provide a certificate of what flavors there are in the whiskey if you ask for a certificate. But you can only ask for a certificate if you're a wholesaler. But from the articles I read, no one's actually ever asked for a certificate. I mean, uh, they would probably have a hard time finding how to fill them out. Like, where are those certificates? This is much more caramel candy over here. It's like a dark caramel candy. And I think it's the Crown Royal by virtue of the rich aroma. Is it a better aroma? I wouldn't necessarily say that, but it's different. Okay. I got to get through these comments because I got to do the tasting. Drinking, baby. I'm sorry, Crown Royal is pretty good. Hey there, Ronald, says Ronnie S., I got my head like this because I don't want to glance down at the whiskey. Had a couple of rolling rocks for a dollar draft last night in my local watering hole, says Bart. Well, wow, that's good. Hey, hey, Ronnie. Maxwell, Ronnie S. Happy Easter Monday. Happy Easter Monday to you. Daniel Wells, can't wait. I just read the title, Royal Canadian. Canadian whiskey cannot contain more than 50% corn, says Ronald Sutton. Uh, Where did you hear that? And you. Hi, Maxwell. It was very nice, Ron, meaning the apple brandy. I was nervous based on some of your comments about flavor brandy, but I was pleasantly surprised you should at least try. See, I made comments that I wouldn't want to try it. I never said it was bad because I, I never had. I did have spice brandy, though. That's flavoring. The um, Corbell XS, so I have had it. Uh, it's good stuff, Bart, or apple juice. What brewery, Maxwell, Ron, will there come a time when you show or play the craft work record? Talk about Autobahn. Maybe. I enjoy it. I also enjoy it, Craig. I'll show it if I get a chance. I have the I have a first printing. Let's see. All right. Taste. Sweet corn. And um oh uh, Oh, I would say some rye, peppery, spice, and wood, charred, not charred oak, just like wood, like toothpick wood. Now, let's go over here. This has got to be the Royal Canadian, I'm telling you. Y'all can see I can't. Much darker, much richer, much sweeter, much more like... Uh, 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 maple syrup and dark, uh, black strap molasses. This is clearly the Crown Royal Black. Here we go. Ha, ha, ha. I got it right. I don't even know why I had a tag. There was no way I was going to confuse it. What do I need a tag for? I don't have any other Canadian whiskeys except for the, the, the Canadian Club 12 year that's that dark. Now, is, is it a better whiskey? Uh, I, I, I would say so. Yes, I agree with that. I do doubt you. It has to be 50% rye. 
where did you get this? I just want to see the documents. I have never heard that there's a regulation that Canadian whiskey has to be at least 50% rye. I, I don't, I don't believe that. I, I just don't believe it. Okay. Uh, they, they typically have a higher rye content. Yes. But, uh, well, I never read that in my life. If you can cite the source, we'll look at it. Have you ever had Glenn Fark plus 15? No, no, I never had that. All right, let's, yeah, reading from Reading, Reading, Pennsylvania. All right, let's get down to this because we could go all night. And I want to join Multi Monday where they're doing uh, um, English porters, English porters. Okay. Oh, uh, man. Yes, Ron. I did not mean you dislike the flavor of brandy, just that you were so against them that it made me reticent to try them. I trust your outlook. It wasn't really I was against it. Oh, well, maybe I was. I guess I just, I don't like the idea of flavoring beer, wine, or liquor. But then I drink flavored beer, wine, and liquor all the time. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, why can't it, people just try it on its own merits? But I get it. I get it now. I'm not as hostile as I, as I used to. It's just that I don't have time. I bought a blackberry flavor brandy from LaRue, La, La, La and I bought a spice blackberry brandy from LaRue. Okay. Uh, however, however, um, I didn't really want to drink them. So I told my daughter, you can have them. You can have those. And she was really excited. Oh, ooh, she said, that really sounds good. So I'll send it to you if I know how. Well, yeah, just um, just tell me the link. You could type the link down here. In fact, uh, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I, I never heard anything. Spot on the taste of the Crown Royal. I like a few nips sometimes. Oh, thank you, Trevs. And Trevs is in Australia. We got people from Canada, Australia, these Commonwealth countries. Got people from all of the United States. Got people from the Russian Federation. It's a worldwide event, y'all. This is a worldwide event. I'm I'm like Elvis Presley in 1973, live from Hawaii. Everybody's watching me at the same time. Thank you, uh, Colonel Parker, for coming up with this idea. Colonel Parker, Tom Parker actually did come up with the idea live from Hawaii via satellite. Um, so the the Royal Canadian has a nice sweet corn flavor. Um, I like it more than when I first tried it. When I first tried it, I thought it was really stark and kind of harsh in a way. I don't know. I couldn't get used to it. It was like too woody. Yeah, it was like too much like uncharred wood. It was like, ugh. but now. I'm starting to get a, a taste for it. Yes. So it's very nice. Is it worth $8.99 a, a bottle? Oh, well, yeah, of course. Look, you get a full-size bottle. And I know in the Commonwealth countries, they pay, they get a 700 milliliter, 700. But here we get 750, you see. $8.99. I do believe I got a good deal. Now, thank you, Trevs. Are you going to watch the national championship run, says Jay Hop? If I could keep my eyes open, but I got a feeling I'm not. I'd rather – I do want to see how Gonzaga's going to do. I hope they win. It's a Catholic school, and I'm Catholic. I'm a, con I'm a convert as of 20 years ago this month, Easter Easter Vigil 2001, actually. But anyway, but uh, – but, um, and plus, I never won it before. But I'd like to watch uh, – the Tampa Bay Rays play also on television. So have you tried the Booker Nose Bourbon? No, but I saw it the other day. I buy a few bottles yearly. Love the cash rent. Um, I know about the No family, NOE. They're the master blenders at, uh, uh, at Jim Bean. They're, they're, they're matri the matriarchal line of the Jim Bean family. You know, they got the No family name, but they're Beams. Cheapest buttons, he says, cheapest button. If all the nations can drink together, it's a good sign. I'd rather countries drink together than fight and argue and have wars. I really agree with that. My alternate channel is called Anti-War, after all. I Googled rye in the Canadian whiskey, and it says that American rye 
whiskey must be at least 51% rye, but there's no legal requirement for Canadian rye whiskey. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where that's coming from, you know. You can look um, Google or Yahoo or Bing, like type in Canadian whiskey regulations, and it'll link you to the uh, government of Canada. They're not real strict. They just say it has to be aged at least three years. Um, now, American whiskey regulations really aren't that strict either, as long as you follow the guidelines, and the guidelines aren't that strict. If you have any kind of brains, just follow it. You want to make bourbon? Okay, fine, make bourbon. All it has to be is 51% corn. The other grains don't matter. It doesn't even have to be aged a certain amount of time. True story. You can have bourbon that's aged one year. Now I got people going to jump up saying, you're wrong. You're wrong. No, I'm not wrong. It just can't be straight bourbon. It can be bourbon or it can be blended bourbon like Kentucky Gentleman. Buffalo Trace makes Kentucky Gentleman. They make a blended bourbon. Now, is it really good? Uh, no, but some people like it. Um, it's the same price as the straight bourbon. So there, there's an answer right there. So some people pay the same price for straight bourbon as other people pay for blended bourbon. Same thing with 10 high. Some people like 10 high. I thought it was fine. You know, it's blended bourbon. Wasn't the greatest thing. That's a style of whiskey. That is a literal legal style of whiskey, blended bourbon. You can look it up on Tax and Trade Bureau website. Blended bourbon. True story. As long as it's 51% straight bourbon. All right. Here's the big question, though. Is the Crown Royal Black? Let's go with the current price. No, I'll go with my price because somebody's probably can can probably find it for that price. Twenty nine, twenty seven ninety nine, minus eight point nine nine. Yeah, nineteen bucks. I can figure that out in my head. Why am I? Using a calculator. All right. Is it $19 better? Mm. Question of the hour. Let's, I'll just pour a little bit more. People say, you're drunk. You're drinking. No, I'm just trying to see. I, I'm going to be very uh, careful because I want to save it for taste challenges. Look how much I have left. I still have. Um... Oh, yeah. At least 65% of the bottle left. Um, I didn't pour that much to start with. That's why I'm having trouble. I Googled Ryan. Can oh, yeah, yeah. I already read that comment. Value time says Ryan. Value time. It is Ryan. value time. You know what else Royal Canadian has? It has almost like a creamy aspect, like cream. Like you say cream, you mean like sweet cream? Uh, yeah, like a sweet cream. It's strange. Uh, kind of like uh, Seagram Seven Crown. Some of y'all know about Seagram Seven Crown. It has that creamy, sweet cream. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of vanilla or a, um, French vanilla uh, coffee cream or something. I, I don't know. It just it has that. Mm, I wouldn't be too quick to judge this product. Initially, you might find it rough. Like you might say, oh, ooh, no wonder nobody carries it. But um, I don't know. I think if you keep sipping on it and tasting it and giving it a chance, it might you might like it. You might like it. You might like it. Sazerac, they're a good operation, so... They know what they're doing. All right. Oh, my golly, my golly. Let's see. Um, a little bit more of the black. I'm really going to be stingy with the black. I'm trying to save it forever, but it won't last. It's like the Wicked Witch of the West. She thought she was going to last forever, but she got splashed with water. If you read the novel, it's a lot different than the movie. I was watching a movie yesterday afternoon a little bit. Yeah, even like the general, I, the main idea of the movie isn't is not even the same as the as the book. They really changed it. Um, 
Uh, yeah, she did get splashed with water in the novel, but it wasn't like an accident. Remember in the in the movie, she set Scarecrow on fire and, and Dorothy grabbed the bucket just like out of instinct, um, reflex action and threw the bucket and it splashed onto the witch. But in the book, they go into a lot more detail how the witch never bathed because she's a witch, you know, like they never bathed like filthy because they're, they, they follow the, you know, they, they're apostles of the devil. You know, they follow Satan, the devil. So they're dirty, you know, they're, grimy you know so she uh she she made dorothy a slave actually if you read the novel she, dorothy was literally a slave she had to clean cook and everything because she was trying to figure out how to get the silver in the book it's silver slippers off of her feet not ruby slippers silver and she was like i can't kill her because it'll break the spell now that was in the movies so it will break the spell so uh couldn't outright kill her she had to figure out a way so she she was trying to like think about it in the book. She's like thinking, how can I do this? She was uh she turned the tin man into a beehive, put the lion in a cage, and um but if you read the novel, Dorothy was like clever. She was only eight years old, but she was thinking, like she said, I notice. She said, I noticed the witch never comes near me when I'm dealing with water. Like when she, Dorothy took a bath, the witch would be talking to her through the door. She wouldn't go in the bathroom. Okay, Dark Side of the Moon on Third Roar of the Lion. Q Dark Side. Oh, yeah, right. Right. The uh, synchronicity. Right. You're right about that. Uh, but if you read the novel, which is much better than the movie, although I like the movie, Dorothy was saying, oh, thinking to herself. She said, she never comes around water. Now, there's another thing about the novel in the movie. If you ever watch the movie very, very carefully, see, so you got to be watch it very carefully. I'll probably watch it 50 times. There's one scene, and it's very quick. The witch has this cap in her hand. It's, a, it's like a silver embroidered cap with jewels in it, and there's two flaps down either side. She has that cap in her hand, and she slings it across the room and throws it. So when she's talking to the wing, the they call it the flying monkeys. People say the flying monkeys. But if you read the novel, it's the winged monkeys, winged monkeys. But if you watch the movie, you see there's a reason she's holding that cap. And if you read the novel, there's a reason. She had to have that cap to uh, to control the monkeys. But uh, in the novel, Dorothy thought, this witch, she never comes by water. So she must have some kind of fear of water. That's what the little girl was thinking, Dorothy. She says she's scared of water. Now, if she'd have come in the bathroom while she was taking a bath, she would have just splashed it with the water because she had she could see the witch was like terrified of water. So she's thinking, aha, something going on with this. Now, in the book, I can't remember how, but she she baited the witch some kind of way. She was telling the witch, like, oh, um, she was mopping the floor. Like, you got to mop the floor. The witch was very cruel. Mop the floor. Okay. But somehow in the novel, she told the Wicked Witch of the West. She said, oh, uh, come in here to the kitchen because I got, there's some kind of problem I'm having. There was some kind of problem. Like, it was some contrived. It wasn't a real problem. She was just making it up. But like, oh, come see about this. So the witch came and fell for it like she got baited. So when Dorothy got the witch to come into the kitchen, she immediately grabbed the bucket of water and slashed, splashed it right on her on purpose. Not an accident like the movie. I guess the movie didn't want to make Dorothy a killer, you know, a conscious killer. But Dorothy in the novel was like, screw that. She's not going to make me a slave and kidnap me. So she splashed a womb and uh, she melted through the floorboards. If you read the novel, she melted through the wooden floorboards onto the ground. So then everybody was amazed that she killed the Wicked Witch. And they said, oh, she's a wizard. She's some kind of wizard. And... Uh, then the Wizard of Oz got really paranoid because he said, oh, she's more powerful than me. He was a fraud anyway. He wasn't really a wizard. So he got really scared. 
And then, well, you know, the story of the dog uh, exposed the wizard as being a humbug and all of that. But uh, it was very interesting when you read the novel how she uh, she set the witch up and splashed her with the water and she she melted through the floorboards. <laughs> uh, Ron, did you read the Marvel adapt adaptation of The Wizard of Oz? No, I did not, but I'm aware of it. It's based on the novel. I bought the big omnibus a few years ago. The art and writing is good. It follows the novel very well. I'm very familiar with that. It came out about 1975. It was in the Marvel Treasury edition, the big ones, which I have some of the DC ones. We represent the Lollipop Guild. Yeah, well, that's all the movie stuff. Marvel adapted quite a number of Oz novels in that omnibus. Oh, yeah? Okay, well, I got to get off because uh, it's they're calling for Porter. Now, the, the question, is it $19 better? Hmm... Man, it's hard to say because um, you could buy two bottles of Royal Canadian for one bottle of Crown Royal Black. I don't know. It's hard to say. I, I think Crown Royal Black is really great. It's definitely worth $27.99. If you can only get it for $29.99, I say go for it. Buy it. Now, over over $30, bucks, uh, I, I might shop around. But, uh, oh, yeah, it's great. They did a great job. This thing is like a legend, and it's only been on the market 11 years. It's a legend. I mean, it's really, it lives up to its billing. I did have trouble. I could not tell it apart from Crown Royal and Crown Royal uh, Bourbon Mash. That's the, the truth. I, I'll, I'll admit that. But that was early on. I didn't have a taste for it yet. I, I hadn't, uh, what you say, developed a familiarity, familiarity with it. But it is really great. Uh, is it one of the best Canadian whiskeys I've had? Yes, it is. And um, I would strongly and highly recommend it. So is it better than, is it $19 better? Uh, uh, that's a balancing act. I would say your call. Uh, I can't really definitively say, but um, it is better. I don't know about the $19. Cheers, Ron. Baba Booey, says Dr. Frosty. Mama Monkey, Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Okay, Booey. Now, Canadian, Royal Canadian, is it what, do I recommend it? No, Ron, the book I'm referring to started in 2008. Oh, well, uh, that's weird because they did do a treasury edition. Maybe it was DC, but I thought it was Marvel. Uh, an adaptation of the Wizard of, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Uh, yeah, I would. You would probably love the 1970s artwork, you know, when they were all hand-drawn, no computer assistance. Uh, yeah, that's the one to uh, check out. I never bought it, but I remember it. Royal Canadian. Uh, booey, Baba Booey. Um, $8.99. Man, don't even hesitate. Uh, ten ninety nine, yeah, maybe hesitate, but no, it's probably worth it. I wouldn't go over ten ten ninety nine. I wouldn't go over eleven dollars. No, wouldn't do that. But anyway, uh, for a good cheap whiskey, it's it's a great value. All right, so long video, but now get ready, y'all. It's, it's time to jump over to uh Jesse at um Bumpy Road Brewery, brew brewery, Bumpy Road Brewery, and we're gonna do. Multi Monday English Porters. Thanks for watching this video production. <laughs>